so the limitations of the former imaging system were overcome by the use of a compound microscope for imaging whole insect specimens. This technology is engineered specifically for photographing, or sorry, for examining slide-mounted specimens, something that's been prepared and mounted and put, up, put underneath a cover slip with some sort of adhesive, and you transmit light through the specimen. That's what these lenses are engineered to do. So what we're doing is actually putting a whole specimen still on its pin underneath those same lenses and using a different kind of camera system, but very much analogous to the other system we used before. And we're able to get images that are several times more resolved than the other system. The two major factors are involved in the success of this system. The first being the type of lenses, the objective lenses we use, are what are known as metallurgical grade objective lenses. They are not color corrected for shooting through glass because on a typical specimen, if you are shooting, if you're going to photograph something that's been slide mounted, you have to color correct for how the light is refracted through the cover slip itself. And there's a color shift that takes place, and a properly engineered lens can reverse that color shift, and you get a proper color image. These, however, are for metallurgical use where they do a lot of examination of non prepared specimens that are, don't have any cover slips. Uh, those lenses were our key here. They also have a fantastic working distance, so you can actually get an entire pin or point mounted specimen underneath the lens without the lens crashing down on the specimen. That's obviously not desirable. The other innovation is this tiny little white dome you see here. What I've got is a, it's just like the LED dome we used on the other system, except here there's only 20 LEDs, high intensity. They're DC powered with a 9 volt battery. And this produces the illumination sufficient to actually get the specimen exposed properly to the camera. This particular camera is a Kodak chipset, and it's what we in the industry call a light hog. It requires quite a bit of uh, photon power to get it to expose properly. And this mini dome with just 20 LEDs is more than enough to get it, get it uh, sufficient, get a specimen illuminated for photography. So what I've got up here on the screen is the same species, same specimen that we had in the other, other system, uh, but the, the resolution of certain key structures on this part of the thorax are, now I can actually see them, I can actually see the individual ridges, I can see how each individual hair pops out of that ridge. Um, now, the depth of field of these lenses is even shallower than the last system, so we still have to stack and these images are much larger than the other system can produce. These images are about 15 megabytes each from this camera. And the microprocessor of the computer can only handle up to 42 images before it crashes. So we're pushing kind of the limits of the computer itself. Eventually we're going to have to upgrade that computer. At which time we'll upgrade the camera. At which time we'll have to upgrade the computer again. And so goes the vicious cycle we're in of technology these days. But we, we have successfully utilized this system now in about six publications recently. It's a little bit more time consuming than the other system. You have to do a little bit more specimen preparation, get the angle just right. Uh, sometimes there's some post photography editing that has to be done. But all in all, it produces an image that is close to the resolution of a scanning electron microscope. Not quite, we'll never be able to achieve that. But we have the added advantage of them being in color. And for a lot of the species I personally work with, they tend to be this kind of color, dark brown, black, with some orange legs. There's not a lot of spectacular coloration to be actually captured on, on the, by the camera. But there's other groups where we've got spectacular um, metallic blues, greens, reds. All those colors are species specific and diagnostic and completely lost if you're shooting in an SEM. So this is a kind of ushering in a new age of photography, I think, for scientific application. The SEM has been a standard in hymenoptera-based taxonomy since the 1960s. And we're now seeing a paradigm shift into doing something where, the same, in the same publication, we could have some SEMs of really high magnification of, say, the part of the tarsal claw or part of the ovipositor, things that you really need, you know, 10, 20,000 X to receive properly. But we can, that, that publication could have 
in a, uh, can be, how would you say, um, have the added advantage of color images at the same time. And that way, when someone's looking specifically at a diagnostic character, they can use the SEM, but if they just want to see what the wasp looks like, if they had the same wasp under their microscope, they'd have a nice color habitus that they could access as well.